bring in this morning uh, on a kind of an emergency basis our district attorney Dave Sunday, who joins us here to talk more about this. Good morning, Dave. How are you? First of all, Gary. Good morning. Uh, it's great to hear you, and it's great to good be morning. on the show. Um, I, I think it's important that we take a few steps back here. And what what I don't want to do, and this is something that you and I have discussed a hundred times on your radio show, is to not view um, certain things in a vacuum and to not allow the echo chamber of the Internet and of the radio and, and of media to sort of take away from what I think is, is the main point, okay? And I mm-hmm. want to start by saying that, and I've read a lot of the uh, articles that were online. I've read a lot of the comments that people are making. And I think it's important for us to sort of stop and start with the facts, okay? And when I say the facts, I I have to be careful going in the specifics of the incident, but the Pennsylvania State Police troopers that are all across the state of Pennsylvania and all the other, we have 22 municipal police departments in York County, all of these police officers are, just like every single one of us, doing the best they can every single day to stay safe, to do their job, to do it well, to keep the community safe, and to get home to their families. Okay, and so what I don't want to see is one incident in a vacuum be painted with a broad brush across the entire spectrum of all the brave police officers and first responders that are out there doing their thing every day. And, I think it's and you know me well that. enough. That's not what we're trying to do here. We're trying to make sure we focus in on this one because it did happen in your county. And, and but it does. But it does when it does happen like that. And again, there was some false stuff that went on here with getting this girl out of the car and saying that headlight was or taillight was out when it was not uh, and saying the glass tint was too dark when, you know, are those things we're really worried about right now? And again, I, I'm no one is second in line with you in saying. Troopers across the state of Pennsylvania do a great job. We, we are very blessed to have, I think, a great system. And yet we see some of the things that we worry about as people in this situation, and it's important for us not to paint with a broad brush, brush and yet at the same time to make sure that the people know that this is not to be tolerated in a free and, uh, and a society that has liberty and freedom. Okay? Yep, and, and I agree with that completely, Gary. And I think that, this, that you know, what I've seen a lot is I've – and first of all, this was a traffic citation, so or a non-traffic citation. So typically, my office would never even be involved with something like this. It happens. Um, it's taken care of at the magistrate district justice level. And so, you know, we even dug into this like we would cases that come up here to the DA's office. Um, what I do know is we have to be very careful. When I say we, I mean the collective we um, that are in positions where, you know, our voices are heard everywhere. And I think right. what I mean by that is I think it's critical that everybody has the facts before they really dive into things like this. Uh, for example, and, and again, I don't, I'm trying not to go into the details of the case because I myself haven't um, reviewed the citation. However, in my conversations with the Pennsylvania State Police, it's actually a brake light that was out, not a tail light. And again, I, I'm only bringing that up because cause that is different than what has been said. Okay, And, and what I don't want to do here, Gary – is, again, you know, create this story that takes on a life of its own, because right now everybody's very worried. Everybody's concerned. There's a lot of anxiety. We've talked about this. And during times like that, it's important that we all have to have a little bit of tolerance for each other and to work together as a community. So turning back to this situation, okay, um, first and foremost, I want to assure every single listener that you have and every single person that, that hears this, like I have been from the very beginning, there is not one person that you will find that has been pulled over solely for uh, violating the stay-at-home order from the governor. If someone's pulled over, they would have been pulled over for a traffic violation or some other um, crime. Okay, so no one is being pulled over. And I challenge anyone, if, if anyone has been pulled over, without there being another reason, solely because of stay-home order, I would ask that you email me at the DA's office, and I will look into it immediately. But I haven't but heard Dave, let me, let me yet. let me insert one thing there. Okay, you're pulled over for a brake light here. Okay, then the, the officer in question, in this particular case, I'm going to keep it very, you know, narrow here. In this particular case, also then asked this girl to get out of the car. Was she drinking? Did she have alcohol? So in doing that, you're already violating the social distancing there, all right, unnecessarily, 
Uh, she wasn't doing any of that. Uh, is the tint on your glass too dark? Uh, questions like that are answered. Now, in other words, what you're saying is police can't stop you uh, strictly for violating that order, and yet at the same time they can use a pretense, which the guy obviously did in this case, and he then does not charge her for the brake light being out. He says, hey, get that fixed, by the way, uh, but does charge her for being out driving around. So the, the, the scary part, and this is where I think you have to understand it, um, is that you know people are saying, well, that could have been me. That could have been me driving, and someone said, oh, by the way, I, I, I think you had a brake light out, you had something out. Are, are we really concerned about all that during this time? Is that really what we're worried about right now? Are those the important things? And if to use that as a pretense, from my standpoint, is the wrong thing to be doing. Uh, and we're going to have the girl and her dad on tomorrow who's a mechanic at 8.05 to talk about this directly. But I wanted, to, you know, so I think I, I want to make sure you understand uh, as well. You know, you're telling me about making sure that we're putting the right information. I'm trying to do that. You know me to be pretty responsible about that. But I'm also saying I've got a concern. I'm a little hot about this because when, if one person can do this and say, well, we're not stopping you for that, we're stopping you for this, and then they ask you to get out of your car, that's scary stuff, especially if you're a 19-year-old girl driving by yourself. All right? Well, Gary, I appreciate that. I think it's also important to understand that, that police pull people over every day. And in times like this in particular, there's two points I want to make. The first is that, you know, no, the police don't know. Now, you may know the girl, okay? The police don't know the, who's in that car. And when the police see a car, especially under times like this, and, and, I, and I don't know the trooper. I have no idea what was going through his head when this occurred. Troopers do not have the right to ask you where you're going. Is that right? As we talked to Dave Sunday this morning, our district attorney, uh, they're not allowed to uh, stop you and ask where you're going. I mean, that smacks of... Uh, you know, do you have your papers? And, and I don't think anybody wants to get into that kind of thing, do they, Dave? Well, I, of course not. I, I do think we need to remember, though, Gary, that, you know, when a trooper pulls, when a trooper or a police officer pulls anyone over, okay, regardless of the circumstances, let's say it's, um, you know, speeding, whatever. Sure. I have personally seen the videos, and we all have seen it, where those situations, and again, I want you to know, and I want the listeners to know, I am by no means defending a citation if, if it was improper. However, I think that we need to curtail the way that we're discussing this in a manner that – and the reason I say that is because when a trooper or any officer pulls someone over, Gary – and I love that we're disagreeing because I think it's important to be able to have discourse – and honest right. intellectual discourse, that's what makes our society so great, which is something you have discussed many times. And you have to remember, when a trooper or a police officer pulls someone over, they don't know who that person is. Okay, I know that, yep. They don't know who that person is. I've personally prosecuted a case where a, someone getting pulled over turned into attempted murder of a police officer. So they pull someone over in the beginning. Okay, they're, they're not sure what's coming out of that car. They have to assess the situation. They walk yep. up to the car. Every time someone's pulled over, you're going to have a police officer or a trooper say to them, what are you doing? Where are you going? They have every mm -hmm. right to do that. And every citizen has every right to not answer. Okay? Yeah. And, so, and so, again, we're, we're kind of – it's difficult because we're talking sort of about a, generally, you know, without knowing the specific facts about how this went down. But the point is troopers and police officers are trained – to do everything they can to get whatever information possible to ensure their safety. I think we also need to remember, Gary, that in times like this, okay, due to the six-foot um, distancing guidelines, troopers and police officers, okay, they, I mean, if, you, if people think that they want to put themselves in harm's way every day, like, they're wrong. But they're doing no, I read the articles over the weekend about how they're going to have to do that because they're police and they do that kind of thing, and I understand that. But here's a situation where you stop somebody. Obviously, it turns out not to be, it looks like a criminal or anything like that. The reason that you give her the ticket is because she said, I was out driving around, which any of us are doing right now to go take a run or, or a walk or whatever. And, and I think where my disagreement with you is it, it, it's almost like somehow you're tacitly saying that's okay. And, and I don't think it's okay. I'm hot about it, and I and I and, and again, I do, do every does every trooper in the state of I imagine most troopers in the state of Pennsylvania when they read this story were cringing, saying we know better. There's common sense. We got to be sensitive. We don't want to put ourselves in harm's way, and yet here's a 
a young trooper, apparently two troopers actually pulled up with two cars who do this. And, and my only concern is that, you know, we make sure that this does not happen again. And again, you know, based on what the girl said, she was honest in her answer. That's why she got ticketed with a 200 and some dollar fine. And now that ticket has since been, we found out this morning, pulled back. So that's my concern. Go ahead. Right. I think that, I mean, I, I hear your concern, Gary. However, the problem is no one is being pulled over for violating the state home order. It's just not happening. That's a false narrative. It doesn't exist. I mean, and, and we've, I mean, we've scanned, I had the trooper scan documents to find out if it has been happening. Um, again, you know, I'm here because I want to know if that's happening. And, and I, anyone can email me here at the DA's office. All they have to do is go to the website. They can call me. And so the, the, what, what this story is, should be about is a trooper who may have written a citation, okay, that may not have been the best call for him that has been withdrawn. The story is not that there is a statewide initiative by police officers to pull right. people over and check their papers. It doesn't exist. It's not happening, and it is absolutely untrue. We've been untrue. very careful in saying that. We've been very careful in saying that. And yet this is the only case in the state of Pennsylvania that happened. And, we, and you know, out of this, there are a lot of concerns that people have, and that's what I'm trying to express to you because you have made a point many, many times of saying you're there also to protect the constitutional rights of people. And I hear a lot of protected police here, and I understand that, and we need to do that as well. That's very important. But what about the constitutional rights of people potentially? Oh, Gary, that's absolutely untrue, Gary. I, I'm here to protect the rights of everybody. And I think that's, that what, I just, that's I what I just that, said. That, that's what I just said, Dave. I mean, the point is, very simply, no one is getting pulled over for violating the stay-at-home rule. It's not happening it's not going to happen. If it does happen, I'd like to know about it immediately. Well, they, they were in this case because they stopped her for a, a brake light, oh, weren't charged for that. that. Got, <laughs> she was got charged. Brake light got charged out. for this. Got charged in this case for breaking the stay at home order. It was an improper charge. No, Gary, but you said that's why she was pulled over. And in the law. No, I did not. Important. I said she was pulled over because <laughs> of a brake light or a tail light in the beginning. That, that was not it. But then. I'm saying, was that used as a pretense then for nailing her for the stay-at-home order? You and I have to continue that on Wednesday, I guess. But uh, I would invite you to tune in tomorrow at 8.05. We're going to have her on and have her version and also her dad, who was a mechanic, who checked out when she got home, and apparently it was working. So that's the other question that we have. But I appreciate you taking the time this morning, Dave. Always enjoy talking to you and always enjoy even disagreeing with you. And we'll do it Thanks again on Wednesday, Gary. okay? Stay Thank safe. you, my friend. Bye -bye. You too. Be safe.